week we're going to do something a little different. Instead of my deciding what we are going to do today, I put out to my classes earlier in the week about what kind of things they would like to be doing in art class. And I got several suggestions. So inside this little box, I have written down all those suggestions that I got on teams of what people would like to learn. So I've already given it a really good shake and we're gonna pick out what we're going to be doing today. So let's go with this one here. Oh, and here we go. So we're getting different types of dogs. Clearly someone was offended that I only drew cats last time. So we're going to be drawing different types of dogs. I'm going to keep this box for next lesson as well and I'm going to be taking another suggestion out the box. As I'm getting suggestions throughout the week I'm just going to keep adding them into the box and then I will keep picking them from the box. So if you have any suggestions that you would like to have added into my prompt box here then make sure you get in your suggestion if it's even via my Twitter or by your teacher. But let's get started on the different types of dogs. So as I get myself set up and started here, let me just go over how I did this today. So what I did was I did the same as I did for the cats. I set myself a timer of about one hour and that is the time that I had to do these particular drawings. Now the task for this was to do different types of dogs, so not just dogs in general and just having them in different positions, but different types or different breeds of dogs. So I am going to do that throughout the drawings. This first particular one is a little Labrador puppy, also known as the Andrex puppy. So I'm again starting off with very, very basic shapes. And again, I'm doing this for all of the dogs that I'm going to draw. It makes things so much easier. So I've started off with a rounded off cone shape for the main body and a round oval head. I'm doing it so that he is sitting down and he's kind of looking over his shoulder. So I'm just refining the shape till I get a general outline that I am happy with. Dogs generally don't have a lot of pointy corners in this position. Giving him some nice floppy ears. And again, I'm just overlapping over the tops of the shapes that I've already had. They are there to help me position things where I want them to. And I'm just going to give him a very simple little smiley dog face. And finally going to add on the tail and then I will go and firm up the lines that I want to keep. The next one that I'm going to draw now is a Dalmatian. Now I am 100% basing this off Pongo from uh, the 101 Dalmatians. So I'm doing a very, very classic Dalmatian with a nice bright red collar, collar ah, a nice bright red collar in my head, even though I'm not going to be uh, putting colour in these particular drawings. The structure of a Dalmatian or dogs with a similar body type are that towards the front to where their head is, the body is much, much wider. And as you get towards their back legs, the body kind of narrows as it gets there. So that's really important if you want to get the shape for this particular Dalmatian, right? I also wanted to draw him like he was walking. So 
So all I've done is I've just given a general skeleton. So where do I want the legs to be? And that's going to give me a skeleton to work with so that I can then draw the shapes around them. For any of the drawings, I never just go straight for drawing and just go, oh, there you go, just a perfect dog in one coat. It's not going to happen. Shapes are really, really important to help you. So I'm just giving his head a little bit more definition. So I'm curving the top for where his forehead down to his eyes up to his nose will go. And then I'm adding in an ear. I will actually shorten his little snout because I think it's too big by the end when I get through this. So there's always little adjustments that I'm going to do. So working on his front leg here. And if you can see, I'm not just doing a straight line down. I'm actually curving it slightly to give the idea of movement. And also, I've got lots of pictures of different types of dogs up in front of me to use as references. I never draw things like this without pictures in front of me. They are very, very useful in terms of looking at, again, shape. How does the structure work? How does the skeleton work? It's all very, very important. It's really, really difficult to draw animals, dogs, without references in front of you. So just working on his back. So again, making sure it's nice and curved. Dogs generally don't have pointy bits on them, apart from potentially where their little knees are. And this one does have, on one of them, you can see where the knee is. A little bit there. So again, we've got back legs going and again, powerful muscles on these dogs. So that thigh, I'm not sure if it's called a thigh on a dog, but that particular thigh muscle is really powerful. So you can see how, how big it is in comparison to the bottom of the leg. And calf, I should say. And he's got very teeny tiny little feet. And so far, I'm quite happy with how those are going. And you can see again, just making small adjustments as I go. I'm only rubbing out lines that I need to, but other than that, I am leaving all of the lines as much as I can. And now his other back leg there. So again, that thigh muscle is going to be a lot wider than the bottom of the foot and again I'm making sure it's curved so it's giving the illusion that he is moving. If you draw it straight down it just looks like he's having a stretch so if you curve it it helps give the idea that he is walking. tail and Dalmatians have quite long thin tails. They're not a fluffy dog so I will move on to fluff texture shortly but the two dogs that I've drawn so far are all very short haired dogs. And that's his front leg there. I do end up moving his leg a little bit further down because it's just a little bit too high up. And there you go, there I am adjusting his face slightly. Just so it's a little bit shorter in the snout. And the collar. So again, as you draw this, draw the collar so it actually goes out from the neck slightly. If you push it right up against it, it looks like it's almost like a tattoo on the dog. You want to make it look like it's actually going around the dog like he's wearing it. And of course, the famous Dalmatian spots that will go on to this dog too. And again, as usual, if you feel that you need to take a break after doing a dog and have a wee break, absolutely, that is fine. You do not have to do this in one sitting. But do not rush this. If this takes you more than an hour, 
that is absolutely fine. You can maybe watch and flick through to find the dog that you would like to draw. Okay, so maybe you don't particularly want to draw a Dalmatian, but maybe you want to see how to draw the Dachshund or the Samoyed that I'm going to draw. So there is no right or wrong with this. Or maybe you want to draw an entirely different dog, but you can take the same idea of the different shapes that I've used and how to construct them and still apply that to other dogs. I'm just firming up the lines for some of them. But the ones I'm really happy with. And when you see my head moving in the shadow, that is me checking my reference picture to make sure, does that look right? Does that look okay? And as you can see, I didn't. So when you see my head turning like that, I am looking at the pictures that I have in front of me. And if you notice, I do that quite a lot. You have to keep looking at your pictures. And there we go, just moving that down there just does make it look a bit more convincing. And then all I'm doing is firming up the lines and then adding in his Dalmatian spots. And with that, our Dalmatian is all done. The next dog I'm going to draw is a Corgi. So a much smaller and a bit of a fluffier dog. So again, I'm starting off with basic shapes and I want to draw this dog like he's sitting. So I've done a tall oval that will end up being his head and his ears and then a smaller kind of half oval to make a L shape that will be his back legs. This line I'm bringing out here is going to be his snout because I want a slightly more slightly side on view than I had before and again this looks a bit strange he does look a bit like a duck to start with but it all changes up and I'm making it so that his nose Again, just like the Dalmatians, curves upwards slightly because if you look at the structure, he does have a slightly turned up snout. And I'm giving myself some couple of eyes. Just to give me an idea of where he's looking. And the two lines I've just drawn down here towards his snout are part of the patternings on the fur for a corgi. And I'm also making sure that I turn up his little mouth so it's going to look like he's smiling a little bit. I'm going to give him the nice pointy ears as well. I really enjoy how a large corgi's ears can be. I think they're really fun. So I've got one edge that's quite straight on this ear and one that's very curved. And what that is, it's because the ear is not completely straight on, it's got a little kind of turned in point where the ears kind of tuck at the bottom. So I'm making sure I put those in. So all it is is just come in a little bit from the side and curve it towards the bottom. giving him a little bit more of a more pronounced tummy. And I'm shortening that little back leg a little bit because corgis are actually quite short dogs. They're small dogs, but they're quite, quite short dogs when they sit up.
and I wanted to give him a little tongue sticking out. I'm going to move on to his back legs now. So I'm just kind of marking how far we want the foot to come down and then I'm creating that curve for where his knee is when he'd be sitting down and his little foot underneath. Corgis also have very short legs in comparison to their body so want to show that as well by just drawing them a little straight. Now if you see at the back there his bottom was looking a little bit too square so I'm wanting to just make sure that's a little bit more rounded at the back there. And then adding in the last bits of pattern because he's got a white tummy and kind of an orangey tan fur on his back so I want to make sure that we're showing that there. He's also not looking particularly fluffy at the moment and I will show you how just some simple mark making can help it make it look like he's that little bit furrier. And of course his little tail as there. So as you can see, I'm now just rounding out some of the tummy, just adjusting some of the lines I want a little more in case there's any other changes. I'm doing kind of like a small V inside his ears to make it look like the ears are actually folded. And this is also a really nice tip to make things look a little bit more three dimensional. So I'm rubbing out that bit of line there on his tummy so that I can make him look fluffy. And all I'm doing is I'm doing small flicks with my pencil, following still that faint line that you can see. And those little broken lines just give the idea that he's a little bit furry. I'm also putting some small little flicks on his tummy there, on his side sticking out, and also on his neck there. And these just give little hints that this is a slightly fluffier dog. Our next dog that we're going to go on to is a Dachshund or a Sausage Dog. Very small, very cute dogs and very, very long in body. So we're going for a slightly different body type. Still a short dog like the Corgi. So he's got a very long face from looking at pictures and of course his classic long sausage body. Very curved, like the Dalmatian, his front body so his little chest is much much wider than as you get towards his hind legs so I've got quite an exaggerated long oval and I'm now just joining that up to the tummy there and I'm going to use the curve for where his bottom would be to curve in the legs slightly because the, most of the reference pictures I could see show the legs kind of sticking more inwards but it's still a very rounded shape so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to exaggerate some of these lines and I'm going to draw on the little tail while I'm there and then again starting from the snout following that through curving the neck down and just again you can see I'm using the shapes that I've already made and then as I come towards the hind legs there, I'm just bringing up that line so it goes into that oval a bit more and curving it round to meet that hind leg. So again, using all the shapes that I made, I'm just adjusting them. Adding in his other little hind leg there, you can see we're now getting a little bit more of a shape here going on that's more interesting. I'm adding in his nose. Now his nose doesn't take up the whole front like the corgi, just the very top there. I'm going to give him a little smiley face too. 
because why not? And I'm doing a little closed eye. And again, I'm going to give him very short legs because again, if you look at a dash and door sausage dog, they have very, very short legs in comparison to their body. So I'm just going to draw some really simple short legs. And they've got some very big floppy ears in some cases. So I'm making sure that I draw that in. Again, just drawing straight over the drawing, nice and lightly. Give me just a little hint in the back there that there's another ear on the other side. And then for a Dachshund, I wanted to do something slightly different with this one. I always think of Dachshunds as being quite like little lords. I don't know why, but I do. So I end up drawing a bow tie and a monocle on him because I feel that that suits a Dachshund character. I don't know why, it just does. So there we go. So I'm just firming up some of the lines here before I do any of that. Going over the ears that I am now very happy with. It's just either kind of a teardrop shape here. They're not just all one line, they get narrower as they get to the top of his head. Yeah, I feel like this little character that I have drawn, his little expression just seems like, oh yes, absolutely, come in for a cup of tea and a biscuit and we'll read a book by the fire. I don't know why, but it just did, so this is why I ended up drawing the bow tie and the monocle on him. So for the bow tie, I've started off by just drawing a really simple collar and then also a tiny little oval for the knot and then just two triangles either side for his bow tie. And then for his monocle, a circle around his closed eye and then I'm gonna do tiny little circles just next to each other so it looks a bit like a chain. I don't know why, but I'm really pleased with this little guy. I don't know why, but I am. And that is him all done. The next dog that we're going to draw is one of my personal favourite dogs that I really like, and it's called a Samoid. It is the fluffiest dog I think I've ever seen in my life. There's one that lives uh, a few streets down from me, and every time I see it, I just think, oh, what a lovely dog. Uh, which is a problem for me because uh, I am actually allergic to dogs and it makes me sad because I would love one of these dogs. It always just seems the most happy, delightfully fluffy dog that I've ever seen. So for this particular dog, again, we're starting off with a shape and we're starting with much bigger shapes now because this is a fluff of a dog. It is a walking cloud in my opinion. So we're starting off with a similar shape as we did with the corgi sitting down. So it's kind of like a bean shape, but you can split that up again into two uh, slightly different shapes. So again, you can do the two ovals, one standing up, one standing below. Kind of an L shape, but you'll get this weird bean shape like that. And just like I did with the Dalmatian, I'm sketching in where I think the legs will go. So definitely not as skinny as the Dalmatians. Again, this is a fluffy dog. He has got some slightly chunkier legs. So doing that there. But as like the Dalmatian, the leg is slightly wider towards the top of the body and then narrows slightly while it gets to his paw. So I'm just sketching those lightly in so that I am just happy with the positioning. The leg that I'm working on the back here is one I have the most trouble with. It just it didn't look right for quite a while, but you will see me going through that. If, like me, you have something like this, it's fine. Have a break from it. If you need to walk away, go and draw another thing. Come back to it. It's fine. But don't give up on it. It just needs a little bit of adjustment. Please don't give up on it. As you can see, I'm just trying to get the angle of the back leg right. At this particular moment I'm looking at this now, I do kind of think it looks a bit like a baboon. Obviously not the original idea we're going for, but you can see how even looking at shapes as you draw them, you can adjust them for other animals. So I think absolutely this would actually be a really good base for a gorilla, a baboon, like I said, quite a lot of animals. Um, so no, even a polar bear actually might be useful for this. I 
And again, I've got reference pictures of this samoid in front of me. And I am leaving in the struggle of this back leg so that you can see I don't draw everything perfectly. I think that is a misconception sometimes. It does take me a while. I've actually never drawn some. I've not really drawn a lot of dogs to be four. What? That did not make sense in my head. I have not really drawn a whole ton of dogs before uh, like this. So this is really a new drawing experience for me myself, uh, doing it this particular way. But I do get there in the end. And again, I'm using all the lines that I have drawn to help me adjust until I'm happy. So having that line in there, I'm slightly happier. Giving it a little bit more structure on the back leg. And then drawing back. You'll see the line that I've drawn across the bottom, across the paws, that was just to help me make sure that they were both in line. I didn't want the front legs being longer than the back legs because that would end up just looking a bit strange. Still not happy with that butt leg. I think my problem with it was the leg seemed too narrow for the amount of fluff that this dog has. As you see this is me pausing, I am thinking on how to fix what I'm doing here. And I also twirl my pencil in my hand when I'm thinking. So I'm stepping away from the leg now and I'm now moving on to his tail. I'll come back to that leg, I'll decide what I want to do with it. But it has this massive tail that when it stands still from the pictures that I've found and the dog that I've seen who lives a few streets away, his tail kind of curves upwards and kind of over his body instead of, as we traditionally think, with all the other dogs, the tail sticks out from the back. Um, so I really, really liked how that was, and again, it is the fluffiest tail you've ever imagined. So I've drawn it that way. Working on the front legs now to get the paws. Bigger paws than the Dalmatian. Now, if I'm correct, these dogs originally lived in very snowy conditions, which is why uh, many of them are white, so it's camouflage for snow, so they've got big powerful paws for running around in the snow. Lots of grip. Very big dogs too, lovely dogs, but oh my goodness, big dogs. Lovely dogs. I've heard they've got quite a nice temperament, but they require lots and lots of grooming. So I'm now drawing in the ears, and again, they've got very big ears. I'm blending the ears kind of into the body a bit more because when looking at the fluff, they are so fluffy, it all just kind of seems to blend into one. And I'm just padding up his tummy there and a bit of his side to add in the fluff. And I really want to make this look like a happy dog. So I'm giving myself a couple of guidelines. So I'm drawing this cross, one kind of right down the center of his face and then one line across where I want his eyes to be, which I'm drawing, drawing on. This lets me plot the eyes, the mouth, so I can see that it's actually centered and in the middle of his head. So they've got very big noses and I wanted to make this look like a really, really happy dog. So like the very simple face I drew at the start, that is what I'm starting with. You could just leave it at that, but I wanted to do his mouth open with his tongue sticking out. So I'm drawing a really big smile underneath and then a long tongue sticking out. I imagine that he has had a great walk out in the snow and he is just happy to be, but maybe he's also a little bit out of breath because he's been running so much. With a little line down the center for the tongue. in his nose and I'm really pleased with this little face I thought it was very happy now I'm going to start adding in the fluffy texture so instead of just going over a few bits like I did with the corgi 
I am going around the entire body for this one. So I'm starting by again just doing those little flicks as they go down towards the tummy. Direction of line is important because you want this to be gravity. So as you get further down, you want to make sure that your lines are all kind of going in the direction so it looks like it's all flowing around the body. Adding in some little paw marks. So you can see right there on his front tummy how I've done that there. Started off with kind of more loose towards the top of his head and as I've got down, they've kind of turned into more flicks. I realised I didn't have to finish off his back leg there. We're gonna, we're gonna finish that off. Might be slightly helpful for him running through the snow. Again, doing the same with the fur on the back there, and I'm rubbing out some of the heavier lines so you'll actually see the texture a bit more. Same for going around the top. And I'm just following around the lines that I have made. And the same for going around the direction of the tail. You'll see that I, I flick by following the actual curve as if I was following the drawing, but instead of one solid line, it's little flick lines. And that gives the illusion that his, his tail is actually folded over. A couple of flicks inside the ears to make it look 3D. And then through on the rest of his body, like I did with the corgi, I'm going to put those little kind of ticky marks just to make it look like there's a lot of fur on the inside of him. See, there's some little flicks here and there, not completely covering, just in a few spots. I very much enjoy how he turned out. He ended up being a very happy chap. And that's him all done. Our next dog, which is going to be another very, very fluffy dog, is an old English sheepdog, or as I knew him for many years when I was little, as the Dulux dog. Very, very fluffy dog again, and the main characteristic being his hair is so fluffy, it covers up his eyes. So I wanted to draw him sitting once again. So as you can see, I'm starting with some simple shapes for a guide. I've given a circular base for his head, which I'm going to use. And again, another kind of slightly more bean shape. I'm not sure how to describe this shape particularly. But on that shape there, which actually looks like a backwards shoe, a backwards cartoon shoe, you can see I've brought that line in from this side and I've curved it in. So it looks a bit more like a hoof actually and left a little corner free that will become some legs so i'm going to start off with that there what i like about these dogs is again they're they're so fluffy they don't end in the perfectly rounded paw their fur kind of covers over the top of them so i've drawn that little line just kind of flicking out that will be his paw there and this is his other leg his front leg that you will be able to see very similar coming down in quite straight and then kind of flicking it out at the bottom for his back leg and again doing that same curve there that his back his knee for his hind leg sorry and then i'm drawing in his little paw there and i've done this little triangle just to kind of show where the join would be when he sits down i imagine this dog is the granddad dog i don't know why but he just reminds me of, of a granddad. I think it's I think it's the moustache. Because he has a fantastic moustache and a massive nose. I'm not saying all granddads have massive noses, but I don't know why, it just makes me think. So I'm giving him some little some little curtain bangs or a curtain fringe over his nose there, because we're not gonna see his eyes. And I'm starting to draw in his moustache. You can see. And then a little covered in there, which will be his tongue. So again, there's some curvy lines for his moustache. Think of them as upside down horns, if that makes it an easier shape to digest. 
and then he's got some little ears that stick out just slightly. They don't stick up, they flop down like the Dachshunds, but of course it's much, much fluffier. And again, using big hairy lines this time, he is even fluffier than the Samoyed in terms of how long the hair is. So I'm making sure to exaggerate those flipped lines that I have. So going over those lines, I'm going to colour in his nose with my pencil. And draw on some more of my hairy lines. Same for his leg, he's furry all the way through, long hair all the way down. If you look up pictures of an old English sheep jog. Sheep jog? Sleep dog. Oh, I've for losing the will to talk here. Good grief. Been talking for too long. Mixing up all my words now. So farming up just where his tummy is there and again adding in a couple of lines just to make it look like he's nice and fluffy. And adding in some paw marks there. And that is him very nearly done. I'll just firm up his chin. And then the last thing I'm going to do is with my pencil, because the patterning on the one I'm looking at is grey, I am going to shade in a little bit of grey on his bottom half, because when I've looked at them, the ones that I have in front of me, the ears are grey, kind of towards his back legs are also grey, but his tummy and front legs are white, and same with the majority of his face. Of course, patterning is different between all dogs, not all dogs uh, are the exact same patterns, but this is the particular example that I am looking at. So I'm just using my pencil to add in that little bit of shade. And after that, that will be him all done. Our next dog we're going to do is a little Scotty dog again I really like because it looks like they're wearing a skirt and they've got a really really long beard. Uh, traditionally when I looked this up it is um, traditional for these dogs to have uh, their fur like a skirt that reaches down to the bottom of their feet and I just I loved how they walked. I thought it was really funny and also very adorable. So I'm starting off similarly to how I started with the Dachshund. So a very, very long, thin face with the oval, coming down quite a long neck, and then it's actually really quite a rectangular base, because I'm not going to actually draw any feet on him. I've also drawn a nice skinny tail sticking straight up, and they've got quite small but pointy ears. So that's the basic shape I'm going for there. Again, take your time, no rush to get up. But I tend to find that as you continue through these types of drawings, the more confident you get. And as you get used to using the shapes, instead of drawing each individual one, you can kind of join them up eh, as you get used to it. So I'm drawing in his eye. His eye is quite far up his head. And then I'm just flicking out some of the bottom for his skirt. And I'm adding in some little zigzags to kind of show, oh, it's quite funny at the bottom there. But also the way that I'm doing this does make it give the illusion that all the hair is pointing straight down. It's not all sticking out like the Samoids did. And he's got a very long beard. I would describe him as I think this dog is a Gandalf. Absolutely feel this. This dog is giving me Gandalf vibes when I'm looking at him. And he's got a little fringe. That sticks over there. doesn't go over his eyes, because I want to be able to still see this dog's eyes. And again, I'm giving him a little colour. But yeah, you might think, why Gandalf? Sorry, I was going off on there. Uh, one, I think his skirt kind of looks like a cloak, and his sort of beard that's a little bit kind of wispier, it's not perfect, reminds me of Gandalf's beard. 
I don't know why it just does. But that is him very nearly done now. I've given him some very wavy bits for his beard. And now all I'm going to be doing is just firming up those lines. Our second last dog that we're going to draw is going to be a Rough Collie. Rough Collies are another dog which I absolutely love. Very intelligent dog. Dogs, good grief, Miss Sloan. Dogs, and I really, really think they're a beautifully tempered dog and very friendly as far as the ones that I have come across have been. So, characteristics of a Rough Collie. Again, very, very fluffy especially they've got a big mane of fur at the part of their head kind of like a lion so when i've drawn that in i've given a small oval that will end up being the snout and then i've given a much larger oval that will be the mane of their fur and then i've also kind of drawn a sort of right angled triangle -ish shape that will again be their legs because I'm going to draw this one again in a sitting position but I want it to look like he's looking up maybe asking for a treat and I want to draw his mouth slightly open which I'm going to show you how to do. This is another very fluffy dog. So I've added in the ears and I've added on a little nose there and I'm now going to draw in his mouth. So from the bottom of that oval I've taken a line down in a sort of smiley face motion, not all the way to the end of the snout, but just to where the very bottom just starts to curve. And as you can see, that is now starting to make it look like his mouth is slightly open. I'm also drawing in some eyes. So again, one right on the side and one that's just hidden behind the other half of the snout. For his mane, as you can see, I'm using those same lines that I've used before, my same hairy lines, to make it look like it's nice and fluffy. And his legs look like they're at the front, quite straight down, but at the sort of back of their leg, it's much, much fluffier. So there we go, you can see kind of the illusion of that is some nice long fur. I really liked drawing this dog. I thought he was very forgiving in terms of his shape because he is just meant to again look like another fluff monster. And I'm drawing in his hind leg here. Much much longer hind legs than some of the other ones that we've drawn. And I'm drawing some wavy bumps on the back of his, well back, again to make it look like it's nice and fluffy. And a very fluffy, loose fluffy tail. Some fur is very Dense, so it's really tightly packed together but from the look of this rough collie his fur is very loose so it separates out more whereas the samoid you see at the top his fur is a little bit shorter than this but it's much more tightly packed whereas the English old English sheepdog sorry the rough collie and the Scotty dog all have a much longer lo um, looser fur And again, I'm just following the shape of the tail that I sketched in and just following through with those really long hairy lines. And I think it's really effective in giving the illusion that this is really fur without completely covering the drawing in lines. It's very deliberate mark making. 
just adding in a little bit more detail into his mouth. So I'm adding in a little extra piece inside that would be his tongue. And just going over his ears. My favourite colouring of this type of dog is the I believe it's called sable and white, but it's kind of a really light tan and a white mix. You can also, of course, get the black and white colouring, but I love the, the sable and the white. I think it's very pretty. And our very last dog that we are going to draw today is a long-haired Yorkshire Terrier. Now, I actually stumbled across this and I had to look up what kind of dog this actually was. Uh, but again, this is another really long-haired dog like the Scotty dog and I really liked it because in all the pictures that I found it has a fringe that is tied up by a tiny bobble and that made me laugh quite a lot. So basic shapes we started off with, we've started off with the head that looks a bit like a ghost so if you draw kind of that usual ghost shape and then we've kind of got a rectangular shape that kind of tapers off towards the end in a slightly more diagonal line. It has some small pointy ears that we've used for triangles and I've drawn a kind of little loop at the top and I've drawn a little bow around it because I think that that is adorable and I'm going to stick again with nice little simple eyes and a little smiley mouth but I'm going to draw the smile just slightly over to this side because I think that this seems quite a cheeky little dog. Again, this is a long haired one, we're not going to see any of their feet, but we are going to see the fur. So I'm now just starting to show those lines there. So again, just a few, and I'm using those right down to the bottom. I feel like this would 100% be Cousin It's dog from the Adams family. 100%, I think they would get on like a house on fire. And it's got a very nice, fluffy looking tail, but very smooth. This dog was very quick to draw and I thought it turned out very, very cute. And that is that dog essentially done. So I think that's the quickest dog we've drawn. But that is that one all done. I might just firm up a few of the lines and then we'll have a look at the whole finished page. And now that is the complete finished page that we're now looking at. I don't know about you, but I am delighted with how this came out. I thought this was an absolutely fantastic suggestion and I'm really, really pleased uh, with how these all turned out. I think my favourite dog that I've done, I actually really like the Dalmatian, but I'm also very drawn to that little Scotty dog at the bottom. And of course the Samoyed. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. Of course, next stage would be obviously to add some colour, but today was purely focused on the actual drawing since that's what was requested. I hope that you have fun recreating some of these dogs or drawing some different dogs. And again, please make sure to share your photographs of what you do. I absolutely adore seeing what you create. But other than that, I think this has been a really uh, productive day for me at least and I hope you feel the same. Make sure you get in your suggestions if you would like to have any of your requests popped in my box of destiny uh, for any further art projects that will get done. But I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye bye! Mm -hmm.